Hey coders and welcome to episode 2 of our calendar service playlist of the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be talking about getting events. So getting events is a natural progression from our last episode when we talked about getting calendars. After you get a calendar you're probably going to want to get the events on that calendar. The top two methods for today are get events in which you can specify a start time and end time for your range of events that you want to collect and then get events for day. And, it, and this is just basically if you want to get all the events for a, ver for a day, one single day, you can specify that very easily by the date argument. Both of these methods have optional parameters that you can include for filtering and more specification. But let's jump into the code and get going. To showcase our get events method, let's use our default calendar. So I have declared a constant called cal and I've stored in that the default calendar like we've seen in a previous episode. I've also declared two more constants called today and tomorrow and those are going to be JavaScript dates. One is for today, the 26th February, as we can see right here, at midnight. So this means zero, hour zero, minute zero, second zero. So this is at midnight and then tomorrow is just the 27th at midnight. So these will be the outer bound and the two outer bounds of our date range. So now let's look at getting all the events in between those two dates. So if we go into our calendar user interface, we can see that we have 11 events right here. And these are all dummy events, so don't worry. These aren't actually how I did my uh, day today. But I am going to go back and I'm going to try to get all of those events. So the method to do that is get events. And we have two options right here. We can include uh, both of these require parameters, which is start time and end time, and both of them are JavaScript dates, as you can see right here. But we can also include an optional parameter, which is conveniently named options, and that is a JavaScript object. So to showcase a little bit of that, let's select this option uh, with, the, with the optional parameters. Start time is going to be today, end time will be tomorrow. Options, again, is a JavaScript object, so we need our curly braces. And if we drop a line and maybe two, there are a lot of different properties that we can use and they're all found on the app script documentation. You can have a look to see how you can filter this, but one of them is author. So if we went, go back into our user interface, you can see that a lot of these were made just by me. Take the dog out was created by me. Uh, lunch with friends also created by me, but this one down here, fluid dynamics exhibit, you can see that this was organized by my college email address. So this was not created by me, this was sent to me, and um, so this is owned by my college email address. So let's say we wanted to get that one. So again, if we didn't include this, this a method get events would get all of the events uh, between these two date ranges, or in this date range. And if we wanted to include the optional parameters, we could filter that a little bit more. So here we go, author, and let's say weissdav at sas.upen.edu. And this doesn't look great. What is this? Oh, it's dav at sas.upen.edu. Okay, great. So now we're going to get all the events that are authored by that email address. So let's just wrap this in a logger log. We'll hit save. We'll hit run. We'll hit view. We'll hit logs and we will wait for logs. Please wait. So it should return, yep, it returns one element within the array. So this is the calendar event that is associated with this, with this calendar event right here. We could get the title just to verify that, but you'll just have to take my word for it. This is the event that it's getting, and it's organized again by my college email address. Great. So there's another one that we could use. There's another property that we could use. Let me just comment this out for now. And it's called status filters. So we can include something called status filters. And what this does is it takes an array of uh, guest status enums. So to get to the enums, of course, we always need to access our calendar app. And then here it is, so guest status. So let's say we wanted to get all of the all of the events that we've been invited to yet, but we haven't yet responded to yet. So the ones that we haven't RSVP'd to yet. So we'll say invited. And again, there's only one in this date range that we haven't we haven't responded to or RSVP'd yet. And it's this one right here, 
fluid dynamics exhibit. And just to make this clear that we are getting that event, let's just say, let's pick out that and we'll just say get title. Get title. You can tell that I like my auto completion. All right. So if we hit save and we hit run and we hit view logs. We will wait for those logs, but it should return fluid dynamics exhibit. Okay, there we go. So yes, we did in fact get this event right here. It says fluid dynamics exhibit. This is the one that we haven't responded to. So we got it right here and we got the title of it. Great. So this could be useful, say if you wanted to set up some automation, say all of the events or meetings that I haven't replied to yet, just reply in RSVP, either yes, maybe, no, something like that. But this is a filter, great. So let's move on to our next method. And the next method is going to be almost exactly the same, except for it's going to be get events by day. So if we say calendar dot get events, and here it is right here, get events for day. I think it said by day just now, but it's for day. So get events for day. And it there's an optional parameter called options. And these options are going to be the exact same options that you would put in this get events method. Um, and since we already showcased that, let's just use this one right here. So there is one required parameter and that's a date. And that's a, going to be a JavaScript date. So we already have one right here, it's called today. Another way you could just do this is say new date. So new date is going to take uh, the the date, but then also the time. But since it's get events for day, this method is actually going to slice off the time and it's just going to look at the date. So it's just going to look at this 26 number right here. And it's going to say, all right, we're going to get all the events that happen between uh, midnight on the 26th to 1159 p.m. on the 26th as well. All right, so let's now just log or log that just so that we can see that we're getting indeed all of these events from our default calendar. We'll hit save, we'll hit run, we'll hit view. Oops, not that one, we'll hit view. And you can see here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 calendar events. And that is associated with all of this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 events. So again, this went out and got all of the events for today and it returned all of them in an array. So guys, I hope you learned something in this video. If you did and you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.